Welcome back to this series of Light Reading Conversations with Leaders in Cloud. Terry Sweeney here with Light Reading, and joining me now is William Caban, Global Telco Chief Architect with Red Hat. William, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Um, the term cloud gets used uh, just about everywhere. Tell us a little bit about the difference between enterprise and telco clouds. Um, the, the underlying question being, is, is this more than just a software-defined data center? Oh, absolutely, it, it is. So when we look at the telco cloud, it, it's it's really a private, at the same time it can be hybrid cloud, but it's set there for specialized and workload. And from the very, very beginning, it's designed really with that intent. So there's, if we look at the workload that we have to support in this cloud, it's a workload that requires low latency. It requires real time capabilities in, in the kernel all the way to the far edge. It, it really requires this level of granular uh, observability all the way from the hardware to the platform, the OS, the workload and even the session. So the applications need access to a holistic view of of these metrics such that it can behave in, in the expected way of adaptive workload, optimizing for the task at hand. So that's that's not the traditional uh, characteristic of a cloud. Uh, the other thing is that in these clouds, they are required to have access and control to certain level of hardware, which again, the traditional cloud will not provide by default. Uh, the traditional cloud or the enterprise cloud is designed in in one of active, passive, or or one primary and and backups. But the telco cloud cannot afford that. The telco cloud is designed from the very beginning to logically be across multiple data center, central offices, edge location, all across, and it can extend the resources. Yes, to to that. Uh, cloud, the traditional cloud, or the hyperscaler. But if we look at the patterns, it's not the traditional hyperscaler now. It's the hyperscaler going on-premise. So that's why it makes so different the, the telco cloud. It, it's a cloud. It has the same characteristic, but it's specialized. So it's it's clear that external dynamics are, are, are shaping the, the cloud and, and this equation as well. Talk a little bit about how advances like 5G, MEC, the needs of enterprise IT applications are impacting the way that telco clouds are, are packaged and sold. Oh, yes. And uh, by the way, if we look at this workload, one of the things we will discover is that they are the absolute justification for a truly distributed hybrid cloud. Because yes, we can have certain elements of, of those applications in, in a centralized or, or a cloud somewhere, but with the promises of, let's say, 5G, where we are supposed to be able to get very localized services, uh, low latency services, either to, to drive a car, to, to do emergency uh, services itself, that cannot afford to run outside. That needs to run very close to where the actual UE, the, the equipment of the user is, is running. So the other part in all this uh, that is happening is that now there's a higher diverse set of requirements and usage pattern of these applications where these applications, again, by, by the nature of them, that they are highly distributed. Yes, you have the traditional cloud, but now this on-premise. So now even the telcos need to basically give access to places where in the past they were never accessible by third-party applications. So it's it's really reshaping the, the whole ecosystem to support a new type of really edge cloud. I think it's fair to say that customers are also looking uh, to hyperscalers to help with distributed cloud. Talk a bit about what the, the, the drivers are there. So the, the drivers are, are the same, uh, uh, faster time to market, uh, access to, to new markets. Uh, but there's also a, a second part of this. Uh, there, there's a tremendous skill gap in, in this world, uh, on the technical world. And when we look into the telcos, what had happened until now is that, well, the RAN team is the RAN team, 5G core and, and so on. So these teams have been very siloed and they are expert on their domain. 
but they are not expert on these new cloud technologies or, or containers or things like that. So now it's very hard to get because of high demand, this, this skill. So that's another reason why customers are looking to hyperscaler. Now, this is, again, the requirements of the applications. This is also driving the hyperscaler to have to come on premise. So that's why we are seeing, again, that movement. So it's benefiting and they are going for the hyperscaler, but the hyperscaler that can go on premise. Turning for a bit to how important it is for, for customers to have a, a consistent experience, uh, common management and, and, and tool suite across these different cloud environments. Where are customers with that? Is, is, is this a key requirement and demand from them or is it more in the nice to have category? This, this is again, going back to, to, to the skills gap that exists. So now the, the, the reality is again, RAN team, the core team, or the value added services, the Mac, all of those teams need to have a common way to communicate. In the past, they, they could live in silo, not anymore. Now all these dynamics of the adaptive workloads need to really be supported. And for that, we cannot have a team that is completely foreign and, and in the way they manage things or operate than a 5G core, for example, or the med team. So that's why these applications really to, to be able to run correctly, you need to, to, to have a, a horizontal platform that everyone speaks the same language, that everyone can understand each other. That's the only way to really have collaborations among these teams in a telco, so that they can go and move and create new services. Otherwise, we'll be back to the, the old days. Well, close us out by talking about why open source is important and can contribute to the, the, the goals or, or the requirements here. Let, let's think about what had happened lately with 5G, for example, and, and that those initiative of Open RAN. Open RAN, which again, were the telcos, they, they, these telco operators that start pushing that to free themselves from the traditional control environment by one or two vendors. So, and all of that, and these are the telcos, are, are pushing that, hey, this need to be through open source. We need to follow the open source models in, in all this. So they, they really are, are looking for like really fostering that inter interoperability such that now I have higher uh, or more diverse ecosystem. So they, they want to be able to choose from that ecosystem. So, and, and basically enable that new startups can come and compete with the big guys now. But in order for them to be able to adopt that, they need to make sure that these are inter interoperable. And for that, really open source is the model that has proven once and, and again, that this is the way to, to really be able to scale. Um, there's another reality is that technology and, and everything we do in, in this world is moving completely at, at, a, at a speed we never thought before it was possible for, for a telco. I mean, telco word, you have five years, 10 years plan, perfect. You don't touch that. Not anymore. Now you, you really need to catch up. The market's moving so fast and that rapid evolution really is only available when you adopt an, an open source model. So that's why it's so important. Well, I appreciate your perspectives on Telco Cloud, lots of intricacies and, and nuance here. I appreciate you joining us for this light reading Leaders in Cloud conversation. Thank you, William. Thank you for having me, Terry. We've been talking with William Caban of Red Hat. This has been Terry Sweeney for Light Reading for the Leaders in Cloud Conversations. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.